Well, hello, students. I hope you have had a marvelous week. Uh, we are continuing tonight in part three of our series about fear. What does the Bible say about fear? Uh, how can we overcome fears that are in our life? Ultimately, we will end this series with an entire lesson on the fear of God, the fear of the Lord, and and what the Bible has to say about that. But for tonight, let's dive into part number three in this series of fear. You see, every day that you and I live seems to be filled with stories of bad things that have happened around the world and even just down the street. From earthquakes to airplane crashes, stories of death seem all too common from those being uh, robbed and then shot all the way up to people taking their lives. Some people have come to grips with the fact that death is a part of life, yet some people become terrified with thoughts that when and how they will die. So tonight, how can we tackle this fear of death and find comfort amidst all of the terrible things that happen in this life and the stories we hear of death and dying? So what does the Bible say? Let's look at these verses. Uh, I want to share three passages of Scripture with you. Let's look at them together and see how they will help you and I handle the fear of death. First truth that we want to learn is this. We do not need to fear because God is with us and brings us comfort. We do not need to fear because God is with us and brings us comfort. Psalms 23 verse number four says it like this. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. So you and I are reassured from this verse in the Bible that God is not only with us, but he also will bring us comfort. The second truth that I want you to see as we tackle this subject about the fear of death and that is this, God is our refuge and strength when we are in fearful situations. He will give us comfort and confidence. God is our refuge and strength when we are in fearful situations, and God will give us comfort and confidence. Again, we find verses in the book of Psalms that help us with this. Psalms chapter 46, verses 1 through 2 read like this, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Here the psalmist was showing you and I, worst case scenario, the mountains crumble down and fall into the sea. Earthquakes happen from everywhere, shattering the world that we live in. Even if all of those things happen, he said that God would be our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. And the same thing obviously would be there for us in a time of death. Third truth that I want you to see, and that is this. We can cry out to God with our fear, knowing that he has the power to hear us and save us. We can call, we can cry out to God with our fear, knowing that he has the power to hear and save us. Wonderful verse that I want to read here for this, and that's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 9. And it reads like this. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, they said this. This is them speaking to God. We can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. I want to read that to you one more time. I, 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 in my Bible, that verse is highlighted. It is underlined. <laughs> There's a mark next to it, so I'm certain to be able to find it and read it regularly. Listen to this verse again, 2 Chronicles 29. They said, speaking to God, they said to God, Whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. 
What a wonderful thing. It's saying there that we can have all of this trouble, no matter what it is that comes along. We can come and stand before you in your temple and you will hear us and you will also rescue us. Let me give you a few other verses that will show you and I the ultimate victory over the fear of death and what it is. And that is this, all death will come to an end someday. The victory over it is in Jesus Christ. So we don't need to have fear. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, then later verse 55 through 57. First Corinthians 15, 26, then later on verses 55 through 57. And they read like this. And the last enemy to, do, to be destroyed is death. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, listen to this, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's wrap this up this way. Thoughts of death can be scary at times. I admit that. It can be. But remember these things. But we must realize that God is in control and that death is just the beginning of the eternity we will enjoy with God. We do not need to live life constantly overcome by the fear of death. Why? Because we serve a God that is in control of all things, even life itself. For that reason, for that reason, students, we are able to trust him and enjoy the life he has given us. Okay, here's your homework. I have a series of questions. I gave them to you on the very bottom of your study guide. Hopefully you've looked at your email. And uh, if you haven't, if you'll open up that email, maybe uh, right there in the email, make your notes, maybe just uh, cut and paste it into your notes app, or maybe write out your response on a notepad or in a journal. Uh, but ask yourself these questions. Question number one, do I live, a fee live with a fear of death and or dying? Do I live with a fear of death and or dying? Is this something that makes you fearful? Just be very honest. Nobody's looking in that journal but you. Number two, do I have a friend, family, or family member that fears death? Do I have a friend or family member that fears death? Maybe someone has mentioned you as a friend, or maybe you've heard multiple times a family member talk about their fear of dying and uh, what all that means. So write their names out, because this is going to be important in this third question. And that third question is this. If so, which of these verses will I memorize for myself and to share with others? That's the most important question out of all of those. If so, which of these verses will I memorize for myself and to share with others? There's some really great verses in this lesson that we did tonight in this part three in our series of fear. Choose from those one or more verses on this subject that you can memorize so that they'll bring comfort to you, but also so you will have that word so you can share it with a friend or a family member that needs some encouragement from God. Let me pray with you, for you, and over you. And then I have an announcement about our beginning to uh, move from virtual Bible studies to go back to our in-person Bible studies at Abundant Life Church for our students. Uh, let's pray. But for right now, let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you. We're grateful for you. We ask you right now for each and every one of these students that they would not be fearful. And instead, God, they would trust in you even with the matters of death and dying. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Students, June the 6th, first Sunday of June, in the evening service. Evening service starts at 6.30 p.m. There is a time of praise and worship and testimony. We will be in the service for that. Then when the message gets ready to start, we will go over to the fellowship hall, and there we will have Bible study, time of praying for one another, uh, games probably, things like that. First night we're together, we're going to kick it off with snacks and a Bible study. But June the 6th, in the evening service, come to the service at 630. Then we will be dismissed to go into the fellowship hall somewhere around 7 o'clock. And then that's where we'll have our time together. In the meantime, God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now.